for us, I always get antsy whenever we hit the go live button, uh, whether or not it's actually going to take off, whether or not the thing's going to happen. Uh, but I think we're doing it. Test, test. I'm trying to refresh the streams here and there. Looking over on YouTube, looking over on LinkedIn. Type in 1337 if you can hear us. <laughs> Okay, yeah. <coughs> Refresh the page. Things look like they're happening, so we might be up and running. Excellent. Well, hey, how's it going, Life? <laughs> I'm doing well. I guess, first of all, I should congratulate you on this crazy milestone of 1 million subscribers. That's actually insane. Thank you uh, so much. You know, I, I every, one, every like two months or so i check social blade to see like how our lines and and you are slowly like catching up and i thought but oh the one million but at this rate i should be fine i should hit it before him but now you skyrocketed up like that so congratulations for that uh, that's, well that's insane thank you so much i wish i knew what did it i feel like it's just i don't know the the algorithm whenever it just decides to turn on yeah. um but I will say now I feel like we've like flatlined. Maybe I just I haven't released a video this week or the past week, so now we're just <laughs> sitting in dead in the water. We'll see. Um, yeah, it's, it's like the staircase thing, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, hey, I will be the first to admit, uh, for folks jumping in, look, we are on Restream, uh, which is one of those cool like multi-stream platforms, like a StreamYard or a Riverside or whatever, um, to go to all the different platforms at the same time between like uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Twitch. Uh, and I will admit, this is the first time I've ever like actually used this thing. So if it's still like a little bit scuffed, <laughs> if if it's still wonky and weird, uh, forgive us. Uh, we, I pretend to be, I think we, we assimilate and try to be professionals here, but it's always we're having fun making it up <laughs> on the spot. So <laughs> the good thing is I have nothing to do with it uh it's all on john's side so i'm just sitting here with the camera pointing at myself and uh i have some cola here and so i'm just in just chilling cheers excellent yeah so it's morning over on my side and like late evening over on your side right yeah it's eight it's yeah it's not that late it's 8 p.m <laughs> it's reasonable uh, so for context uh let's see can i share my screen does that work does it happen will it do it I don't think I'm 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 show and tell too much here, but I wanted to uh, showcase this for the folks that tuned in. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was just like a I saw Live's video yesterday and was thinking, oh no, am I in this video? <laughs> Is this me? <laughs> and I reached out and was like, hey man, do you want to just kind of hang out, chat together? Uh, you want to just banter and riff on um, I don't know your Google Form survey because I saw that on Twitter or X now. Um, and I was thinking like, yeah, we'll just, I don't know, do something simple and easy and candid and casual. Um, I, yeah, maybe for extended context, I have a second channel. So I made like a casual video on the on my second channel yeah. where I talked about uh, whether, I guess that's the topic of maybe the whole discussion, uh, whether phishing step-by-step uh, -step tutorials are unethical. And uh, the unfortunate uh, case here was that John recently uploaded, I guess, such a video. And uh, uh, I mentioned it at the end of that video. I'm not sure, John, if you saw that uh, video in its entirety. But at the end, like I, I did mention uh, because uh, that, that this video was not prompted by you. Uh, I It was a, a different course. It was uh, advertised that, uh, that uh, yeah, that, that's the video there. Um, it's just... Um, me explaining my argument but but yeah so sorry like i know it's it's super annoying with our size like when we tweet something that uh, sometimes it can like cause uh, a bit of drama also and so at some point i realized oh crap john just uploaded this and he had like this one million and i was thinking oh no everybody will think now i'm just like i don't know not not liking that he got the million because of a fishing tutorial or something like this. I don't know. Like I, I was really worried at some point. Oh, will will this cause now or stir up some drama? So, but so I just want to at the beginning right away say um, this was not prompted by you. And if people watch that video, also it's not like not a big deal for me. 
uh, I have a little bit my opinions there, but I'm also happy to dis disagree. And it's, it's like it's like not a big thing. There are much more unethical things where we can like really cancel people over. This is not one of those things. Uh, so uh, and 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 I fully respect uh, John for all the the hundreds or thousands of videos. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that you you made over the years uh, you well deserve it it had nothing to do with that so um, and so I was also sorry for for just keep on blabbering oh, but I, I was very happy when you reached out uh, for for the stream because that then I thought oh okay so this is my chance to to show everybody that this like has nothing to do with like being mad or uh, like having some some bad feelings or anything like this not at all uh, I respect John a lot and uh, um, yeah yeah, I'm in the same boat. I, I never perceived or interpreted it as, oh, some silly thing. Uh, and I thought maybe the live stream of, of us just kind of hanging out and chatting would be a little bit more... Because again, I don't know if other folks will have that idea, or like you said, that impression of, uh oh, it's going to be a debate, live overflow versus John. It's like, no, it's not of that at all. Uh, I think, hey, we're still... It's just genuinely an interesting conversation. It's just like literally at a very insightful and thought provoking thing to chat about, especially kind of with what we both do. Um, <laughs> and I see the chat going off. The stream is unethical. Live was uh when we were just jumping into restream, he couldn't get in, had some like login issues and messaged me on Discord. Did you fish me? Is this a phishing email? <laughs> <laughs> so we're having fun. Yeah. It's all in good fun. Uh I don't know if everyone in the chat, oh goodness, I feel like I'm already jumping into it. If they got a chance to take a look at the Google form or if they were able or willing to go share some things uh, yeah so, so so maybe i can say it i call, kind of all started f from me by tweeting so okay so you all know twitter is all about engagement farming uh nowadays so i always love to just throw out ideas and see what happens not just because still drama and getting engagement but i'm also genuinely interested in this discussion and it's always like i read every single response to all my tweets so it's like it's it means a lot like i'm not responding to everybody or i'm not liking every response but i'm reading every single one of them so sometimes i just throw out ideas see how people uh, react to it um and of course the problem with twitter is you cannot explain a lot of context so i just shared this one tweet uh uh, phishing step-by-step -step phishing tutorials are unethical that was like kind of like the first uh, sorry i'm tweeting a lot uh this was kind of like the first uh premise and then after that, I uh, thought, you know what, let's do a short survey. And uh, that might be like the, the, the thing where we maybe could go over now, because then I thought, OK, let's actually ask a few people how they feel about it. Um, and yeah, so so and, and uh, John also retweeted it. So uh, we got a lot. Uh, we over, more than doubled, I believe, the, the responses. Yeah. Should we dive in? Um, yeah, we could. So maybe, uh, so for me, maybe the intention with this uh, survey to just explain, I was just having a couple of um, uh, questions, uh, whether certain tutorials would be ethical or unethical. Uh, so, I mean, this is not a super scientific survey by any means, uh, but uh, just to get a feeling for how people react. Um, do you want to go over the results? So, um, I can absolutely. Uh, I was kind of showcasing. Do the order of the questions appear in random? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like yeah. whenever I refresh, it was another order. Um, yeah. Interesting thing. But yeah, that's my that's my little attempt to make it more scientific. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else we should banter or riff about, or should we dive in? I'm I'm totally cool if we um, go to responses. I don't know. Uh, I mean, feel free if you uh, have any questions or um i guess i'll toggle light mode off oh goodness sprite everyone all the vampires uh sorry turned off dark mode so yeah we're getting about 400 responses which is really really cool uh i don't think that when i checked kind of as you mentioned hey we were sitting around 200 or so but i'm glad we were able to double that and i'm excited to see all of the engagement in chat um but first one i think is a pretty easy softball for us right uh can there be unethical <laughs> hacking tutorials in general <laughs> uh i don't know i think to me it's so i obviously my standpoint is uh i think there can be unethical uh, hacking tutorials um and but and but but 
in the responses on Twitter and the discussions, a lot, a lot of responses were saying, no, there cannot be unethical, there's no unethical knowledge or information sharing. Um, that just cannot be the case. It's just humans then uh, doing something bad with that knowledge. So I was actually surprised by this majority. And I do wonder if I just biased this response just because of my tweeting and so forth, or if this is generally the answer. But I am generally surprised that the majority seems to think that way. What, what is your take on, on that uh, question? Um, I, I feel like my immediate knee-jerk reaction is just, yes, there can be unethical hacking tutorials. Um, but I feel like it kind of depends on a little bit of the framing and I'm probably guilty of this. Like I am by no means, oh, innocent, a bystander. Cause, uh, but if you like try to showcase something that's, Hey, let's hack this business's Wi-Fi and then go see what we can see in their internal network. Uh, maybe we could find some person's credit card information or banking details. And I use those words as genuinely like kind of a trigger point and stuff for like something in videos just to like, oh, let people know that this is a real thing. Like cybersecurity yeah. has those certain repercussions sometimes, some way, somehow. Um, but if you literally kind of exude I don't know if that's the right word, but you like demonstrate ill will or some malicious intent, then it's off rip unethical hacking. Yeah. It's interesting the example that you just mentioned, because for me, that is, for example, not necessarily an unethical way of uh, saying it, actually. Um, so I, um, I, it, in, in, in this video that I made on the second channel, I also mentioned that like everybody draws like the line for ethical like differently and what they consider for something to be unethical. And so like with this question, we probably won't agree on um, where, like what are unethical courses. It's just a baseline, like could there be? And we could like dream of like crazy tutorials that are unethical. Um, and so I think still it's interesting that a majority of people think there's some way to make courses unethical. There's uh, one interesting thing because we are coming here from uh, our take on that, like a certain topic is maybe or a certain approach uh, also is um, unethical, the knowledge wise. But there was one interesting response that I didn't think of. It's the way of how the tutorial is done. Some people were saying like, if you just copy and paste some knowledge and make a tutorial out of it, that's unethical because you are stealing the knowledge of just somebody else. You're just repackaging it. And that's... Uh, that's actually like a, a way of uh, thinking about whether a course can be unethical that I haven't really thought about uh, before. What about cybercrime courses from the dark web? <laughs> yeah, I On know. Carding. I know yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I haven't seen the video, so it could be. Uh... Uh, I don't mean to... Yeah. Uh, be like ponying this around it's one of those cheesy ones of uh like hey you'll learn wi-fi hacking and carding and uh scamming and getting into all these different things this is um oh i forget the name of hacktown hacktown uh it's goofy it's dumb i guess i kind of said this half in jest but half in the like oh you know what that could probably potentially literally be uh some sketchy cyber crime already baked in by design unethical <laughs> yeah who knows <laughs> sorry what do you think should we should we keep cruising on to a next one yeah. i think do we I, both kind of uh we i say yes did you say yes on this one yeah yeah of course i said yes uh, i mean if i consider fishing tutorials i again i just find it actually surprising that the majority said here yes because from the responses from the people that were engaging with me in and responding to my tweet i got the impression that the majority was saying uh there cannot be unethical courses so that this forum then had a majority in yes was really surprising to me um so like all basically all the loud comments were the the mi minority in in reality uh, which is i guess uh, kind of interesting can you find anything in the chat here of someone kind of really touting no all hacking tutorials are ethical kind of uh, kind of the no answer i think uh, i think this is uh, i th definitely saw it I, so um um i earlier somebody just was writing like the the, the typical comment is that uh uh either uh 
but what about like then then your courses are everything is unethical kind of like which i take as a word okay of obviously it's not unethical otherwise everything would be unethical and then uh i do feel like earlier i saw somebody saying that uh, knowledge is not unethical so yeah i was trying to look for some maybe going against the grain or our perspective because there is the clear majority more like two-thirds ish that said yes yeah. uh, looking for a no interesting one i feel like that is kind of the softball though because there is a clear stark majority yeah I, I i actually think like the no people is kind of like a very strong position um like a, a principled position people just be, say like knowledge should be free and everything but i do believe like if we actually sit down we could all come up with with some kind of tutorial that is just blatantly unethical um even if it's i don't know like you could think of the most outrageous thing ever and say now i do a tutorial on that um yeah I, so i that's a softball as you said i feel like it's clear that there can be unethical tutorials interesting should we keep cruising maybe the next one yeah yeah that's that's it oh it's like a weapon it can be used for either offense or defense that is quite a topic we can dive into <clears throat> This one is one of the most interesting in my mind because this gets right to the root of the issue of like, all right, fishing tutorials have kind of been the uh, vehicle for the conversation. So yeah. a step-by-step -step fishing tutorial is unethical, neutral, or ethical. For one thing, I love the fact, or at least I think it's super fascinating that this is a almost sharp divided by three, like it's in thirds. Mm. Can I ask what did you have in mind because you wrote this and you created this form what did you envision for the uh neutral answer uh actually i i, I guess it's a cop out that it's like uh it's it's evenly spaced i guess that maybe was my expectation i don't know <laughs> um i do think that my position is pretty mm, not unique but I feel like my position is kind of rare. Either people, I, I so so. I thought it, it the unethical part would be way less from from that perspective. Whether really? neutral yeah. is um, uh, like either it would be ethical or neutral. That's what I thought uh, the majority uh, would say. Again, based on the 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 comp the responses I got, where everybody was just oh not everybody it's but where a lot of twitter responses were saying there cannot be unethical courses how would red teamers learn blah blah all these arguments so so i figured like not many people would agree with me okay is that kind of why you had that neutral spot in there or is it sort of a safe middle ground or? yeah i just wanted to give people like a, a like if you don't feel very strongly about it, you are on the fence. I just wanted to uh, generally like offer like a middle ground um, option. Yeah. Okay. I guess I, I still have trouble finding my answer here because I have obviously released videos and shared content on fishing tutorials, <laughs> in which case I would like naturally bucket and fall into the, oh, it's ethical, it's totally fine category. Um, well, I, and I agree with that. Uh, like the majority of me first half says, yeah, I think I am okay with it because I see it as a part of penetration testing and red teaming. And because I know that's part of the work that the industry or some of the security professionals do. I know I think you're, Lynn, what you showcased in the video was that, hey, the information's already out there in web development, system administration, IT engineering, and other like pockets of education that give you enough of the ingredients to understand what a phishing email and setup is. Um, but I don't know. I still, I think, hey, if you're trying to be getting into this career path or in the industry or knowing what the threats are that are out there, some of the awareness and some of the just information sake and knowing how easily it's done just for demystifying and telling it to folks that aren't as familiar with what the heck phishing is or just how easily they're cast out across the internet. Um, I have, yeah, clearly obviously taken the stance like, well, I want to show this. I want to put 
pull back the curtain. I want to show you how it's the sausage is made and I want to make that a real thing. Um, yeah. yeah and and of course, I don't have a problem with explaining people how fishing works. Um, it's i'm I'm really what I'm uh, getting hung up on like the, the the actual like problem for me is kind of like this extreme beginner beginner friendly step by step aspect of it. Um, I feel like fishing awareness, for example, fishing awareness training um, can be done with just screenshots or explaining like uh, like showing screenshots of here's the back end panel or uh, easy to set up. I, I don't think there's really a need for this step by step um, um, guide, this extreme detailed step by step where you can just follow along. Um, I don't think that's necessary to... Um, to make people aware of phishing, how easily it's done, um, how it works, um, for a professional to replicate it, uh, based on my argument was also the knowledge is not hidden. It's basically web development and server administration. So uh, if you understand the idea, if some if if you would like show them like here's roughly how it's done, then they can easily replicate it. It's, I'm really getting hung up on this. Somebody has no not really a clue, but on a weekend they can start from zero and set up some phishing. That, that's kind of like where I have uh, the problem. That's sort of, hey, just kind of enabling and just making it so easily accessible for small, whatever, I don't know, script kitty, uh, I put that in asterisk, but like young impressionable kid doing this on a weekend. Is that right? Yeah. And so there are two major topics where I have problem with. The one is the phishing, and it's actually a little bit the weaker one. The second one is the malware stuff, because malware can be even more intrusive than phishing a single account. Yep. Uh, so so actually malware setup or malware development, I don't know, take a, like a step-by-step -step tutorial, take this GitHub project, clone it, build it, and then you get your EXE, and then you can send it to your friends, and here's your... like This step-by-step -step is actually way worse to me than the phishing one. But um, I mentioned it in, in, in this video. I had this experience as a teenager where I came across um, a remote access Trojan step-by-step um, -step tutorial. It was just advertised in like these forums. I, I heard it over a friend. And basically, it was so simple to follow along this guide to uh, build your own EXE and send it then, then to friends. And obviously, they trust you. So if you send them something, like it was bad. And then you were able to hack them. And I think, and I feel like there is so much damage and harm on a personal level that I uh, did against somebody else um, that... I would like to avoid that because it's unnecessary. There's like nothing really gained with that except a trust is broken and privacy violated and, and harm uh, done. Neither did this make me a better hacker or anything like that. It, I think all around, like it was just a, a bad experience. And with phishing, I think it's the same. Some beginners, teenagers might set it up and send it uh, to people and to their friends and so forth, try to hack them. I don't know, send it in school to some girls because they want to steal some pictures from them or things like that. I, I, that is where I believe the damage is uh, done with these basic step-by-step yeah. -step tutorials of phishing and malware. I get that. That's so... In yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah. Say your point first. No, because I'm wondering, and I don't think there's any good solution or remotely close to an answer. But it sounds like the like dangerous demographic is the younger. I don't want to say generation because that's not the right word, but the audience, that's also not the right word, but the, I don't know, uh, individuals that consume that info uh, that aren't as that don't have the wherewithal that are just impressionable that are trying to get it and are wanting to play with the, some interesting toy that has some edgy oh cool hacker vibe to it and then yeah you say pull this thing down from github run the executable or just send this email to someone um that don't like know what it is that they're all getting into uh or yeah the aftermath repercussions consequences like those oddball ethical situations you said and and the thing is with phishing and malware i do believe the the crime or the harm committed is really uh uh critical no that's the wrong word it's <laughs> it's really a lot for example um i thought about this earlier uh the or what, what's it called the 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 dolphin? No, not dolphin. The flipper zero. Flipper zero. That's the one. Um, 
ama amazing device, incredible uh, engineering. Um, uh, really kudos to uh, the makers of that, like incredible product. Um, but it is such, yeah, this one, um, it's such, and it got like, it's also not the fault of the makers, but it got, it spread like wildfire, you know, that on social media, TikTok and, and whatsoever. And now everybody had it in their hand and can like wreak havoc, like mess with the Bluetooth pings, for example, like for the Apple oh, devices yeah. that, that was going around. So that is like a problem. But to be honest, like it's not actually harmful. Like you're not really hacking something. It's like show hacking. It's like not bad. It's maybe annoying or so, you know, maybe you change some TVs or I don't know, like open a garage door, but theoretically you could also destroy the window. So it's, it's like everything is like not a huge deal, but it, the problem is it made it available to the masses. But I don't yeah. consider, but but it's not like super bad damage, but it could be like theoretically if the flipper zero could like really hack into stuff and you could steal like the private pictures or something like this, then that would be for me unethical again, but it's just a toy. So that's why that for me, even though it's like, advertised and available to that demographic it's it's not unethical not a problem for me but the phishing and the malware because it's so bad what you can do with this and and the access and the violation the privacy violations you can have with that that's what what's a problem for me did i get my point across i'm not sure you did and i think i don't know it's easy to extrapolate especially with like the flipper zero as example because you can see and find and they're like booming on the internet of like oh people just like messing with the gas station prices like the led display for hey i don't know uh something on the road that you're just from your car beating up with the flipper um and i don't know how far you could take that but like you the construction signs on the road if they're like some electronic display uh i don't know but you can very very easily probably and i think it's easy to think of like well yeah all of the, the potential things that could happen ransomware in a hospital what the heck's gonna happen uh that's another yeah. can of worms <laughs> I, I mentioned it before our uh the, the, this exclusive video let me quickly share it Ooh, to yes. on, uh, uh, discord this um i mentioned this to john just before a call because um uh, about five or six years ago i made like a short youtube video it's a very old school life overflow video it's also pretty short I, it's just basically a viewer of mine sent me a very bad facebook phishing link and that video is telling a little bit the story i'm not sure if you need to uh, watch the whole thing we can also kind of skip through if you want um it's it's an old school life overflow video with basically slides so uh, i can also just uh, briefly explain it uh, what the uh, point of that video is um let's see let me can i share my screen here yeah what do you think is the best approach here? Are we yeah. giving this to everyone to watch? Uh, am I yeah, trying I mean, to play it from here? Um, I mean, it's four minutes. You decide if, if it's, too, I don't know if it's that interesting to watch in its entirety, but uh, we can also just, I don't know. You you decide. I, I don't know. I just don't know if I can get um, audio, audio through. Okay, yeah, then then I will just uh, talk you through. So this person you can see here in the chat message sent me like a message uh, on Facebook about some opinion or so, and then they sent me this URL, which is a very bad uh, phishing page. And of course, like it's obvious, clear to me, like that it was a phishing attempt. But so this person, a viewer apparently of mine, from a regular message in me. The second message they sent me is like a phishing attempt. Now you can skip a little bit forward. It's kind of, it, this is the phishing site essentially. It's like very obvious and clear, obviously yeah. to, to see. It's nothing major, different language as well. Free hosting. I There was also directory listing on, so you could see all the passwords that go, get logged. And I did see that like nobody got caught uh, with that. So you can see here the directory listing and the, the passwords dump. But the the more interesting part of this video, you can skip now a bit for, forward again, is that I started trying to figure out where this person figured it out from. And you can see here in the HTML code, there were some references to a blog. And when you go to that blog, you can find a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up a Facebook phishing page. Um, and this is literally like you will see in a moment, like the PHP code for that phishing page. And yeah. this is kind of like, my experience, the, the the problem what I have is that a step-by-step -step tutorial gets followed by 
probably a young person. I make assumptions here. Maybe they were not young or so, but I don't know. It somebody got hooked that didn't really understand much. Followed was able to follow the step by step uh, tutorial, set up a phishing link, and actively tried to fish me. I, I, I mean probably not super serious you know they are not a serious threat actor in in that sense but um i can totally see this person also sending it to a friend um and then the link even comes from a friend so you trust that link even more so maybe they are more likely to fall for phishing or so um and here at the end i'm just making the point that this is like a like phishing attempts or trying to fish somebody is like a serious crime like most hacks happen through phishing like it's it's actually it's one of the major th things that happen of course like these basic phishing attempts here are not the ones that the real threat actors do but in principle this is the typical attack that um that people do and and, and this is kind of like what i have in mind it's just like a, a kid has no clue what they are doing is able to follow a step-by-step -step guide um and uh and yeah try try to fish me yeah oh I'm curious what everyone in kind of in the chat is thinking. Yeah. Uh, and, and and this goes together with, you know, my experience myself with the with the malware tutorial when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was fun, exciting, thrilling, sending it to people almost got in trouble. Like uh, one parent uh, figured out and almost called the police and I was crying and begging them not to do that. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's like really fucked up stuff that you <laughs> might get into. And so now comes the point like i do feel like a little bit my responsibility that always like with my videos is i try to redirect this like if you're motivated to learn something like this i i tell you learn web development like you will learn the skills that for phishing or so but yeah maybe use that motivation to um uh, to, to redirect it to like the real hacking knowledge you know the web development knowledge the actual technology behind it uh yeah instead of just the step-by-step -step stuff yeah that's totally fair. I, I, I do agree with that. Um, and my only like the probably like if I if I'm clutching pearls because when I watch your video and I think like oh that's such an egregious URL that's such a dumb stupid thing that no one should have to fall for and that's why I want to like get that education out there so there aren't victims of like that sort of campaign. Um, and we, uh, what like for my day job and what we do, and this this will be two threads, so I'm sorry. Um, for my day job, when we're doing like a whole lot of incident response or malware analysis with EDR shenanigans uh, and just trying to bring security protections in place, um, when we see phishing incidents, especially one that we saw for like, oh, an advanced persistent threat, some like elite, hardcore, sexy hacker and all, they um, posed as a like media outlet and journalist reporter so that they emailed the victim and asked them like for responses for comments for the story that they're writing so can you can you respond to these questions for your imp like interpretation of this thing going on in the world or what do you think of the current affairs with country x and country y and z um so they had the victim send them a document and then they did a little switcheroo and the threat actor and the hacker says Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate this. I'm going to publish this, but we needed to make some final tweaks, make sure the editing is working for our final review. Would you be willing to take a look and make sure this is still approved uh, from your words and your copy here? So they send it back in like an encrypted zip archive with a password protection. It's a macro enabled document, malware, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and I feel like, as you mentioned, oh, that's more of a real ish, real world thing than sure the face ook dot web app host zero zero nine <laughs> um so maybe i don't know if even if i'm trying to clutch and cling on to the perspective oh it's for education it's for awareness well it's probably worth showcasing like you said just the screenshots just the story just the narrative not showing people here's how to fire the gun like yeah yeah exactly this narrative these ideas like they're they so clever ideas how to maybe with the first email get a little bit the trust and then sneak in with the phishing with the second mail that's actually the phishing or something like, that. like there are so many techniques of like and 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 that is the, the story right like it has nothing to do with the technical um uh phishing solution in the end so 
that's how you can do awareness. And then also I'm not against like sharing advanced phishing um, techniques and the technical details of that. Um, this idea of, you know, this is, I guess, a more modern approach to phishing, like this proxying basically of the real website, um, handling of the two-factor authentication and so forth. You know, if you explain on a technical level, here's um, here's how, how that can be done. Um, that's okay to me. Like, I'm not about hiding that knowledge. A threat actor will figure that out, that it's not, this is not difficult stuff. This is like super basic web development. Like every, ex a little bit experienced developer can figure that out. Um, so us sharing that with each other, there's no harm done uh, if at a conference or in a technical paper or even on YouTube, you know, if you explain like this is the setup, how they were doing it. For me, it's this step by step thing for for a beginner to follow like even if when you explain like with with the journalists and stuff like this like even that is already not applicable really to yeah. a, a 16 year old anymore like even that alone is like i don't consider for me that is a, not a problem anymore it's really like this 16 year old i mean i'm so shaming the, the young ones it could also be an older one but uh yeah i think no that is indicative that maybe the the dangerous demographic and i say that with an asterisk is that that younger audience yeah can and, i and, and Mel, uh, sorry no i you got another thread on this. just 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 one footnote about the demographics there's one second one that i highly consider problematic uh, there's also i guess in in terms of like ethical hacking and uh, videos uh, is the is in in the malware space is this stalkerware stuff the spyware yeah. uh, on 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 uh, mobile phones and so forth there also exist several uh, lots of tutorials on that on youtube and even there were youtubers that were advertising such um uh, such uh, trojans before um back then they were got called out and they realized okay yeah that's maybe bad that's another example of just a tool that of, co of course we want to make awareness about stalkerware, but in my mind, you can make awareness of that and explain how the stalkerware works without advertising it or without like explaining step by step. Here's where you can find it, sign up, and what you can do with it. Like kind of like advertise it as an actual tool to use versus somehow be mindful of that. Um, this is a threat model. Um, and, and, here, that's why the demographics. This, this is older people. This is usually adults in relationships that um, try to stalk uh, their spouses or maybe their other love interests or whatever. Uh, if if they have a like closer friends, if they have a chance to install that on their phone or so. Yeah, that that's 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 the worst one. That's actually the most unethical one. The phishing one is really not that bad, and I admit. Um, but yeah, I just want to mention that it's another demographic, like with the stalker where that I think is very problematic. I think that'll totally chime into the next couple of questions, but before we drill down into those, can I ask a little bit of like a curveball? Um, and maybe not so much, maybe this is super duper easy. We can shoot it down. Um, but I work for a company that offers security awareness training. Uh, and that's like, oh, hey, here's the QT PowerPoints or animation or education episodes. So don't plug in USB drives and don't click on links and emails, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but with that, they offer the functionality to like do phishing tests. So we will automate sending phishing emails to our customers and those as clients can fish their customers because they're all managed service providers, et cetera, et cetera. Is that weird? Is that sketchy? Cause like, Oh, you're literally given the framework. Hey, you can go build this. You can go fish your own customers. And as, as a measure of business, uh, is, is it unethical? <laughs> what about them? That's a weird yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I also have like a weird stance, I guess on that one. Um, I, f let me prefix this. I have also done phishing engagements before, so yeah. I'm not, uh, what's it, innocent in 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 that regard. But my honest opinion is that phishing relies on deception and lying, and that's also one of the questions. So keep that in mind in my things. Phishing inherently is based on lying to somebody, trying to trick somebody. So it's on a human level. It's like not exploiting. It's, it's like it's, maybe you have seen that slogan before exploit systems not humans or exploit computers mm. not humans um th this is what i read into that sentence phishing is really attacking like another human on like this very personal trust level totally. and to me that is just very icky um and so i just 
generally don't feel like super comfortable with phishing engagements in general. It really depends also on like the company, if they are handling it very well, like if it's fair game, like if, if the employees know like this could happen, um, or they, they like a security team, they try to fish each other in t as, a, as some kind of like exercise or something like this. That's totally fine for me. Fair but, play. Yeah. But this, I don't know. The, this unsuspecting employee who has no clue um, and then you try to lie to them. I don't know. I find this a bit weird. And then this is even like a paid business. Uh, not a huge fan of, uh, of, of that. And also I'm even questioning the effectiveness, but I also have no data. It's just me uh, guessing, guessing. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. YouTube chat or the poll here is straight up like 90% ethical companies doing this for security awareness training. So I think it's all in the notion of, as you said, like the understanding and the agreement of like, okay, we know that we're going to be fished or at least kind of have those things poked at, uh, then it's fair play. But if it's not known and it's, yeah, that, that kind of take advantage of you're exploiting the human, then it gets dangerous. All right. Should we move on to the next one? Because I think there's more. Yeah, I mean, you can really pull up the the survey again uh, because yeah. I guess we can like uh, uh, with that cover um, basically. Uh, oh. um, so this dives into the SQL injection as an example um, after the phishing email uh, question. How did we get 800 responses all of a sudden? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh wow yeah that just doubled what the heck um i'm curious on your thoughts we're both clear on kind of where we stand for fishing though maybe i'm neutral with an asterisk probably lean ethical but you're still unethical correct i i just want to emphasize again i i i know this the single line like there's a lot of context it's a beginner friendly step-by-step -step fishing tutorial like it's beginner friendly step-by-step -step being able for them to set it up it's really that context um anything beyond that i'm also totally fine with um and i don't see like a, a, a problem at all it's it's okay. i'm really hyper focusing on on basically that have you watched my videos on fishing I have only uh, looked at the, because that, I guess, is what the trigger, the evil engine X. Uh, right, right. Evil engine X, like, yeah. yeah. And to be honest, I may have also just like skipped through. So I'm, I did see that you were like setting it up, but I don't know how step by step it was. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. If I were to ever having to have to go to bat for like, oh, try to defend myself in like some ethical courtroom, uh, I would hope that I skip over like the fish lore, like the actual email itself. We don't write. Uh, we we normally gloss over, but that's uh, splitting hairs and pedantic. Um, I mean, I, I feel like I'm also very pedantic, and <laughs> with my with my take, I'm also like very hyper, like. It's super nuanced. It's super subjective, but I think we got the understanding there. Uh, another interesting ball game, though, is okay. Off the tails of fishing, kind of being deemed more unethical, and now there's a hefty majority that went ethical. Dude, how? What did this? Ha what happened to the responses? Um, SQL injection, hardcore ethical, from at least the the reception and the folks filling out the form. And before, even before we had 800 responses, all of a sudden, it was strong ethical while it was mostly in thirds for phishing tutorials. Now, I'm super interested in that because I feel like, knee-jerk reaction, a potential SQL injection has potentially more damage done than a fish because the phishing email you've got a little bit of a variable a little bit of dependency oh the someone person has to actually have to um, click the link download the malware let the thing detonate run payload fire blah 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 but sql injection if you dump an entire database and maybe have code execution through that well there there's damage and wreaking havoc right then and there uh so it's it's and and I don't say this adversarially, but that's why I'm interesting for folks that would believe okay, phishing is unethical, but SQL injection is ethical. That sounds odd to me. But what say you? <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess here we start in to reach this point where I fully agree. Knowledge should be free. Um, a SQL injection tutorial is like not specific to a certain like that is 
really teaching somebody the skill and then they need to actually actively apply it somewhere. They need to be able to take the knowledge they got through the tutorial and then apply it to a target. Um, here we come really in the realms of um, just like education, learning a skill, then applying it. And I'm totally fine with that. I don't have a problem um, at all uh, with, with that. I'm curious how the chat's feeling. I'm trying to see if I can get any insight from folks digging in. Uh, you still have to have an understanding of websites and hey, the attack surface. It's uh, mm. the, on, in, the, in the Twitter discussion, uh, Tiberius made a really interesting oh, yeah. question, I think, about lock picking, which I think is really an equivalent of, of that same question. He asked me uh, whether I find lock picking then problematic, like in, in at a lot of, lot of conferences, uh, you can learn like the basics of lock picking. And then there are the YouTube channels like lock picking lawyer. So if, whether I find that um, unethical and my take there. It's basically the same with the SQL injection one. Lock picking is still a lot of practice and skill. And then still you need to like find to go, I don't know, you, you need to learn that and then apply it to a lock. And usually the lock is oftentimes also not like, I don't know, there's a window you could throw in as well. Real burglaries happen through uh, prying open doors and windows and stuff. Like I don't see like the same kind of 16 year old uh, doing something that's really bad with like lock picking. Um, is is that because of the in-depth like understanding and their like skill that has to be honed there or i'm sorry yeah I, I at some point i agree like knowledge should be free threat actors will do it anyway like all these arguments that were people responding to me uh about the phishing take is is where i totally agree with and and apply would apply here um uh this hiding that kind of level of knowledge, like like the hiding SQL injection, that would be really censoring. I, I don't know, like the, the knowledge about SQL injection um, is already so ingrained in the technology. I I, 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 fi I find it very hard to defend or, or explain actually. That's all right. Know. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so again, like for me, the it is about like this damage or this potential damage that I feel like I know that it's happening, like with the malware step by step and the phishing step by step. And I agree with you that an SQL injection or lots of other vulnerabilities ha can have very critical severities when found. But um, that tutorial does not do that uh, or give you that ability to cause like the direct damage. I, I feel like there's one level of indirection. You actually need to apply this skill in a skillful way. Um, yeah. That makes sense to me. Yeah. I think you you need to have a lot more know-how for a SQL injection or server-side template injection or buffer overflow or whatever voodoo magic witchcraft exploit vulnerability uh, yeah. than just point and shoot, send an email for phishing. Yeah. And, and here the comments are saying, uh, you know, this this is where I fully agree with this argument. Like here, this is like knowledge, the SQL injection knowledge. The step-by-step -by -step SQL injection tutorial is not applicable to every website. You cannot do an SQL injection tutorial and then I say, okay, now I follow this tutorial and do it on Facebook. That's not how it will work. Um, uh, so uh, the action that you then may later choose to do, those might become unethical, of course. Um, if you cause damage with that knowledge, but it's not you, you aren't able to follow that tutorial and directly cause harm with a phishing tutorial. You follow that tutorial and you send it to a friend and do harm. If with an SQL injection, you cannot go to Google and hack Google with that knowledge. Like it's, it doesn't work that way. Oh man, this is just a fascinating conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think there's interesting, uh, a lot of nuance, but super important. Um, cool. Where do you fall on this? You are ethical, correct? Yeah, I, completely, yeah. I, I no, am no, ethical no. on this just as well. Obviously, having you know, both of us released hundreds, if not thousands, of <laughs> sequel videos. Uh, cool. Um, picture and picture now. I think this is where we the, the rubber hits the road because 
the malware component that you were kind of diving into earlier did this was not a like hefty majority ethical earlier was it do you remember uh yeah no if you are a google docs wizard you can go to the google docs sheet and filter I, maybe there's a timestamp or something i don't know <laughs> but that might take too too long to figure out i feel like we got zoom bombed for our but, google but yes, form <laughs> it was sim more similar to i believe the phishing one in in sense that there was definitely more unethical um as well but yeah, I mean, it's good now. You know, now it's probably more representative um, True. than before. Interesting comments uh, in the chat, and I hope you don't mind me picking on it. Uh, it hey, Kerbro says it feels a little bit weird about having these two technical folks debating ethics without inviting someone with a background in ethics. Not to say I don't enjoy listening in, but that is a fair point, point. Uh, and probably worth addressing. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a degree in ethics or any of that education. You have an ethical hacker certification? Uh, that's true. I do have a CEA. I would say you are <laughs> ethically certified. Uh, I I don't have that certification, so you are right. Like, uh, But I feel like John has the background. But no, of course, like uh, it would be... I would be curious, like somebody who underst really understands like the technical hacking stuff and has a background in, I don't know, what, what is that philosophy uh, that can really uh give us a bit more enlightened takes maybe sounds like we should do this again but maybe invite some more folks yeah. to to chime in um but i'm sorry where do we stand on malware development tutorials because i have released malware development tutorials probably the same copy paste steal from github maybe tweak a few lines of code which can be a little bit squeamish and you're unethical on this one yeah this is uh, for me even worse than a phishing one just because the damage um is worse maybe yeah i'm just shot to death here <laughs> yeah so for, just again to explain like uh the the case i have in mind here i think what you might see like uh these discord spamming malware bots for example with the token stealer like the token stealer i guess is like the the big craze in the with the with the gen z i don't know yeah, uh, yeah. so it's like here this tutorial here build this and then if somebody executes it you can steal their discord token then you can authenticate with their discord and then steal all their private messages or something like this like i feel like this is like a typical thing a teenager nowadays uh, might engage in and uh, the friendly step the beginner friendly again like really honing onto that just enables that kind of um, uh, um, yeah behavior. I'm not against reverse engineering malware, sharing um, you know professional um, uh, techniques on I don't know process injection, hiding it in front of AV uh, kernel drivers to I don't know like all that kind of crazy stuff that real red teamers like real. Uh, threat actors and uh, also, you know, the defensive side might use like all that kind of knowledge. Um, fair game for me out there, like sp share it. I don't care if the NSA uh, figures out stronger capabilities to hide their malware or something like this. Like, I, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, it's for me, or let's say not that I don't mind, but I don't think that hiding tutorials would actually help in that regard because they have good researchers they will just figure out that stuff like that, that that's just not like you cannot limit the harm really with that but with the beginner friendly tutorials i feel like you can stop some teenagers to really exploit and uh, their friends or their community and engage in really bad stuff but just not releasing that and again the knowledge is not hidden it's just basic programming uh, skills basically um uh yeah it's just really again this beginner friendly thing that i'm like so focused on i feel like i'm stuck on this point that maybe i was kind of beating up earlier because i again maybe pearl clutching and thinking well if i were to try to defend a uh, the perspective. I was like, well, it's because uh, kind of, as you were alluding to, this is stuff that red teamers or penetration testers or folks in an industry might genuinely do for their job, like knowing how to build the implant, build a beacon, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but 
of course, a thousand percent agreed to your point. Other demographic, younger, impressionable folks will just cook this up to make evil witchcraft. Um, for example, um, there's, for example, you you probably know these tutorials and probably you have done, I, I believe I've seen you in this before, uh, decrypting like the Google Chrome password store yeah, and yeah, that. That password. that's for me, like one of these interesting techniques, people realizing, oh yeah, you can't really protect against this malware threat model or so like, and that, that could be a component in a malware, right? Like you could include that in some malware sent this now off or so, but that isolated in itself, I don't think a 16 year old will really cause much damage necessarily with that because it's not like this. Or you can't defend it that, or like th that's fine for me. Uh, but but here's this GitHub project, this Discord token stealer, step by step, follow, set this up. Like this is where for me um, the the trouble starts. I want to go find my Google Chrome password hacking video because that did well um but i think probably you know maybe an audience is more interested in in how that is done Some, right? yeah somebody asked if all unethical hackers are 16 year olds yeah i'm really sorry i i feel like <laughs> uh, once you're 17 then you're good once you hit the age threshold then you're perfectly fine yeah, <laughs> yeah that i just know i was a very slow development i i know that i was a an idiot even with 18 and 19 and 20 uh i i don't feel like i i had a good moral compass or understood like the harm that could be done um and the uh, yeah that kind of stuff so uh, for me th th this is the demographic that i feel like uh is most susceptible to to that stuff but yeah i mean there can also be a, a 30 year old who takes the phishing thing and send it sends it to their 13 year old friends uh try to fish them because i don't know uh or their ex or their girlfriend because they don't trust her and like that, that that's the other case where yeah. i think it's it, that what is actually happening i know we're getting close to the top of the hour you're still okay going long keeping chatting hanging out with us here yeah we can do a bit more sweet sweet I do see some, hey, really cool folks kind of in the chat jumping in. Uh, Deo, uh, he's a great friend from more of the scam baiting community. Um, hey, the folks that kind of bring the fight to a whole lot of scammers um, that do li lies and deceit and deception to steal money and have some you know, personal damage in there. Um, and I think Florian uh, might have some also good hot takes when it comes to the zero days and exploits and malware, red teaming, offensive security tooling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I don't want to sprinkle in this direction too, too much because I don't think either of us by any means have any authority in there. So I would defer to it to some of the other folks more true to that community, like Deo, like Jim Browning, like Skimmer Payback, like Midnight, Nanobater, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But do you have any thoughts? I don't think I've ever gotten kind of your perspective on more prolific scammers or scam baiting or is that even remotely worth your world or is something we should probably drive right by what do you think uh what opinion on what whether like scam baiting is ethical or yeah because or... yes probably is the short answer to that question but long answer maybe yeah that oddball vigilante hey can we disrupt their operations etc yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. I find it entertaining as well. I mean, yeah, let me think about this. Uh, I, my, my, my immediate reaction is that's fair game because there are people that do very, very harmful things and you just mess with them back. I feel like that's a fair game. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, yeah. I, I, again, like the, what, what is, who, who's the, for, it's maybe a very basic view on ethics uh, about like this harm and benefit thing. Uh, if we think about it in that terms, then the scam baiter is not might harming that person's employment or uh, that that scam business in general. Sure, there's harm there, but the benefit because they were doing so much more harm to more people. You know, like the scam baiting actually um, has a lot more positive ultimately effect and i know that is a very uh 16 year old ethics view like the amount of good versus evil and if the good overwhelms then it's good you know like uh, that's maybe too basic but 
<laughs> yeah. Interesting. Foot picks for sale. I see you in the chat and uh, really, really flattered. Hey, you saw the People's Call Center video and it was a blast. Yeah, uh, yeah, Deo, incredible to meet you there. So thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to derail, but I wanted to indulge in that. Uh, I, quick super yeah. question. So, so I guess for the, for example, the, the videos where they hack into the, the cameras and you can see their faces and the, those are not censored and so forth. Yeah, I, I think if we like would actually sit down and you would ask me about my, uh, let me, to think about this then yeah maybe it's like not maybe it could be done a little bit like i don't I, for example in germany uh when even when there's crime uh it's a, like the the faces will be blurred and that and you will not get the full name it will just be first name last letter uh, last letter of the last name and so forth like there's even for criminals there's a certain level of privacy and uh respect and so forth so but these are like, you know, we could argue, okay, do these scammers deserve maybe a little bit of, uh, I don't know, like in, in the yeah. end of the, may, maybe, maybe there's something there, but uh, to be honest, like, I, I also think they do great work um, because these are very vile um, uh, scammy businesses. And so uh, I'm actually very, I think that's such a cool thing. And I, I actually do believe that that harms them so much that maybe it does it becomes less and less viable because so many people do the scam baiting now. I, I, I do feel like that's helping, but actually I would also like some data on that, uh, whether the that kind of business is growing or fading away. I don't know. Awesome. Awesome. And I'm sorry, again, I, I wanted to be gentle with that one, but I thought it'd be worth kind of sprinkling in uh, and great to see so many cool people joining for this conversation. Um, let's see, can I screen share again or nope? Okay. Oh, no, now I can. Excellent. Bringing this back, because uh, I think this one might be spicy for Florian, um, the next one coming up, but, and just as well uh, for us. Where did we kind of land on beginner-friendly step-by-step malware tutorial? You leaned very much unethical. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I probably lean a little bit more ethical, but with nuance and very subjective variables at play <laughs> yeah i mean again like i always have this 16 year old or maybe this 13 year old uh, person in mind who wants has no technical knowledge and watches this video and wants to use it so and, and so what basically I'm, I'm watching a tutorial and whether i feel like it could be in, by a total beginner abused in that way then i find it unethical but as soon as there are some ways i don't know even like not explaining really how you can build something or get or like even just one part of it, not really explaining it could completely break the tutorial for a beginner while it's still totally usable for anybody with a bit of experience. Small nuances like that can make all the difference. Uh, but yeah. Cool. All right, let's keep cruising because I want to be cognizant of time, but I think this is where the spice kicks in. If it hadn't already publicly sharing proof of concept exploits for an unpatched vulnerability or a zero day. Okay, yeah. we totally have to have been like the, the Google form of obliterated because <laughs> this went way ethical and I feel like this was pretty split, if not mostly unethical some time ago. Yeah, I think so too, yeah. Uh, but interesting, I wonder what kind of demographic, I mean, now I, I, with LinkedIn, I don't know, LinkedIn has some crazy people. So <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know what kind of demographic you hit here. But <laughs> Fair point. My LinkedIn is maybe where stuff gets wild. <laughs> Let's go see the timestamps. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you try to host a hacking thing for a bunch of hackers and what do they do? They hack it. That's funny. Yeah, maybe also some people automated and spam that that looks like spam. Uh, totally, totally. Yeah, That's yeah. all right. Still kind of fun to uh to banter. Yeah, yeah that looks on it. yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I don't I, I I'm not sure if you can delete them out of there and then they then the, it will update maybe the the responses maybe. for. But maybe yeah. we should have had two forms, one for when we put this yeah, on the Yeah, we freeze line. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, um where do you sit? on publicly sharing proof of concept exploit code for an unpatched vulnerability zero day. Okay. So I also feel like I have, again, a bit of a weird opinion on this here, because if we just like 
the average zero day i'd say it's even ethical <laughs> uh, but i do agree that there are very very bad zero days like actually extremely critical and uh society uh, no, society destroying something a bit harsh but like very 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 serious zero days like log4j for example i believe was one of these for example Re just releasing them out into the wild i do find unethical uh, but my take is actually that the, the average zero day is actually not that bad and uh, the harm then uh, from release is, is not that bad. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It sounds... Oh, I think my camera overheated. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I will fix that. Uh, maybe okay. you will have to uh, go without a camera for just a moment here. That's all right. I could cover some air uh, while you're kind of getting set back up there. But this is kind of... An interesting one in my mind because I have maybe not strictly unpatched. I don't think I've tried to do my best to not share code and attack scripts for an unpatched vulnerability. Um, but I undoubtedly released a PowerShell proof of concept for Print Nightmare and Felina MSDT CV 2023-4044, whatever, whatever. Uh, we built a log4j tester to go spray that across the internet that ended up getting built into like OWASP and Burp Suites testers, which was bonkers. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like I'm close to this one. This feels like I've interacted with in what, the hot stove. And, and in what direction you, uh, you, you are leaning then? I lean... Publicly sharing proof of concept exploit code for an unpatched vulnerability is hands down unethical <laughs> if it is unpatched. Yeah. Uh, if it is patched, I am more comfortable with it. And I've done that. Like I've just flat out done that. Um, when I've had conversations with folks, I feel like I've kind of wondered is there or should there be like some equivalent of like, oh, a 90 days disclosure in full disclosure like google's kind of hey you report to a security you report to a company we found a security issue um wait give them 90 days to disclose or patch the vulnerability and then you can write your full disclosure blog or i i wonder if that should be done similarly for that proof of concept exploit um even for like in the wild exploitation i don't know i'm sorry i'm rambling yeah i mean so the problem is, I think that it's sometimes difficult to assess like how critical um, um, a zero day actually might be because right. like in, in terms of impact, because you don't really know how many sy systems may be set up. You didn't re like really, uh, so there we go. Um, mm -hmm. there, uh, you might not have the data, like how bad it really is. And so definitely the responsible thing is uh, to wait but i do think so here's like wh why i'm saying this i don't find it that bad is because of the life cycle of like a vulnerability so you have this moment of discovery um where you find the the zero day where there's no patch available and then that vulnerability can be ab abused uh, and, and used against every possible system and then at some point the patch comes out and from that starting point, like even the, the patch is out, like immediately afterwards, you can still hack every system because not everybody has the patch oh, applied. Patch. Right. And then you just over time, uh, it will fall, like becomes less and less usable because more and more systems get patched. But probably you will also never reach zero because people will have unpatched uh, systems like five years down the road. And so uh, when a zero day is released, um, there's like this lifetime of it starts to be at some point more relatively bad, becoming less harmful with time. And so the question is like, how short is this moment of like the patch becoming available? And I feel like when a zero day drops, uh, like just full disclosure out there, bam, it's out there. Then the world go will go so crazy for just a moment where like the patches will become very quickly available and we are immediately in this phase like it's it's uh, like in, in that long tail again. So so like there's a, this little moment in the beginning where it's not that bad. On top of that, a lot of companies, when they think about applying patches and do the risk analysis, wh which patches to apply, they will look at whether a public exploit exists or not that will decide 
how critical they deem that vulnerability. And so they might even not prioritize fixes because a, uh, a proof concept is not out there. So they will stay vulnerable for longer because they don't know that there is uh, an exploit, uh, that, that an exploit exists. And so, I don't know, I, I feel like it's, it's just, uh, what's the term? It's just like a, a crazy uh, idea that I throw out there. I don't have the data on it, but I do feel like for the average zero day, that's maybe not as world destroyingly bad, like as log for uh, shell or log for J, whatever. Um, something more like not that applicable to everything. Like even if you throw it out there until like threat actors have taken that, figured out where to being able to apply it to and the world burning because uh, there's a full disclosure happening and now everybody's patching and, and so forth. Like I do feel like that, that window is so small that we can almost ignore it. And we are very quickly then in that phase as if it was like responsible disclosure. Does that make sense? Uh, but that is like a very, um, I'm also not sure if I got my point across. It it yeah. does make sense because you're 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 framing the you are pro full disclosure, right? I lean Usually. slightly. Yeah. Uh, I I I think honestly, most the like the average vulnerabilities are not that bad, um, not that critical, and so I I I think there's a little bit of theater going around with oh my god, a CVE and, and stuff like this. There are very very bad vulnerabilities where it's really deserved that maybe we block them from public knowledge for some time or so. But I don't know. Uh, yeah. I mean, the system was vulnerable before, right? You just didn't know it. So what does it really matter now Now that you know it? Like, I, I don't know. Like, uh, yeah. Because here, I'm going to see if I can get a cutesy little screen share real, real quick. This is a funny thing, and I would, I, I'm poking fun here. Please bear in mind. Yeah, I, I, I'm just enjoying this because there is a fascinating conundrum <laughs> that I think comes to light with full disclosure of yes kind of your to your point of like look maybe it's not as world ending and it's not as majority impactful as something like whoops zero day in ssh or apache or log4j uh but maybe it's an east cupcakes community printer schooling driver uh and that has a limited blast radius but it still affects some people and some organizations and some businesses so silly goofy wondering oh whoops what now that organization just got popped because now we're seeing the in the wild exploitation because the proof of concept code is now public out on the internet and it's just those small folks right it's it's again it's mom and pop shop maybe it's one and done uh but that is an interesting thing yeah i think I, yeah but i do honest, agree that my my take is here maybe a little bit out there. And right. again, we don't know how bad it might really be. It could be, you know, like realistically speaking, an attacker hears about a zero day and needs to somehow put it together into like the whole threat system to be able to fire it off. You know, that take it takes some time um, to, to get that done and so forth. And you don't know, like maybe there's a threat actor targeting the Heli Kitty forum that you have the zero day for, and they were just waiting for that one. And now you drop it and they, they are ready to go. Or, you know, you drop it for something and threat actors, until the news spreads, until they hear about it, and then they realize, oh, that might be an interesting, like, um, you don't know. And that's why probably I agree the responsible thing is obviously uh, to not uh, drop it because you don't know how bad actually the impact realistically will be. Uh, but I do still think it's like an interesting food for thought to think about whether, like, how bad is it, like, really? Um, I I actually really believe the majority of zero days or CBEs that exist, you could just full disclose them and the world would not be worse. Um, I really strongly, strongly believe that. Oh. Uh, but, yeah. Super interesting. Uh, yeah. But again, like I, I do understand, like, I don't know, maybe we are opening a can of worms here. And then uh, so maybe, you know, response. There's, I also think there's no real harm done with like waiting 90 days. I, 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 but I find this also a very beautiful thing. There's another discussion, like how much time or so for responsible disclosure. Yeah. You know, people will have unpatched system two years down the road. Like, is it ethical to then release it knowing that not everybody will have been will have patched or so? 
or until the patch becomes available, right? Like, so the maybe the patch becomes available at the 90 day mark. Now it's public, and now people still have to apply the patches and so forth. Um, but uh, I I think that's okay to have a time frame. 90 day seems reasonable, seems tested, and we have good experience, I believe, with it. Um, and companies that complain about it also were able to adapt and learn and have now processes that are much faster. And ultimately, I think that's a good development. Uh, have you shared any proof of concept exploit codes for any vulnerabilities? Do you got any GitHub repos for CVE 2029, whatever? Or... No, I'm not that cool. <laughs> um, so the two the two blusters for me were, were Print Nightmare and Felina, MSDT Felina. Um, and I released those quick. Like when we were still screaming and shouting about it, I think a patch was again available, but in the like immediate early day, not so end day vulnerability, not zero day strictly. Um, but I remember getting and seeing the emails of folks like telling me like, hey, your name is in our event logs because we saw that your print nightmare proof of concept used to exploit our server and now we have this ransomware. And then some guy told me, that like, hey, I see your name in the logs because your netcat is getting pulled down from your repository. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, I I don't know. I felt like I feel like I have touched the hot stove and I keep telling myself I don't want to do that again. Interesting. Um, okay. But I've done it like a second time now because of Felina and probably, I don't know, potentially a third. So it's like, I think there is a certain amount and like an undeniable amount that it's not the it's not the like oh clout chasing because that sounds so dumb it's not the like oh social proof it's not the sexy influencer crap um but i know there are people and perspectives and we saw it in the chat of this this live stream like i was having fun phone freaking and causing a mess in the 80s just because we like like devilishly that childlike joy of hey, hey I, this something this something cool something sweet so i almost wonder and i've thought about a talk track I like literally a, a presentation or a title on the like, we're never going to get off the treadmill. We're never going to solve cybersecurity and not for like the high flying buzzy reasons of, oh, buy this product vendor market crap. But like, we don't want to because there's something that we, we like recreating and hacking and building the pen tester or creating the red teamer and sharing exploit codes to hack stuff. We like that because sometimes it's cool and we're never going to, solve cybersecurity. Maybe I'm on a soapbox right now. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I think we don't, we will never solve like the phishing thing. Like we will yeah. always find ways to deceive people. The phishing might look different that we don't know yet how it will look like. But this idea of just deceiving people will always happen. Um, same with malware in some way, like even on phones that have, uh, that are so restrictive with their um, with their uh, sandbox, um, they find ways to abuse accessibility features to still make a banking malware on Android. Like it's, they, people will just become creative and malware, like where you trick people into install something malicious. So I feel like we, we will never really get rid of that. But with technical vulnerabilities, like real zero days, you throw them out there, you release them. There's maybe a little bit of havoc, but then again, you come into this trail and this vulnerability become less and less um, a problem. And so, and and yeah, and because it's not directly exploiting a person, like I always feel like, you know, exploit systems and not humans. I like that term so much. Uh, you know, the technical system is the it's fair really game yeah. to, to me. But I, I admit it's a little bit the hacker mindset uh, or the hacker culture with, we want to have fun, exploit systems and so forth. I do know that the developer perspective on that is very different. I, I had a friend uh, studying who was developing a browser game and I started to mess with his browser game and he got extremely, extremely mad um, and uh, like hurt really per, yeah. uh, emotionally be, because like I, it felt like to him I was destroying like his life's work, so oh, to say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I understand there's a bit the, the hacker mindset, uh, this, this, uh, this, yeah. So, yeah, don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> no, man, this is just, there's so much to it, I think, and a lot of the chat and, and what can come from this. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen again and kind of keep us cruising to the next one. 
Um, yeah, because it... I, I guess there's a second question related to the one that we were just discussing uh, last about the details that just maybe is that the next one yeah it is yeah so previously the kind of first pretense for this was just sharing the code sharing the exploit sharing like here's the script copy paste from github you can do what you want uh now this one is a little bit more nuanced of like you're publicly sharing details about the vulnerability unpatched but like what function is vulnerable where in the code path does this trigger you don't share the code. You can't copy and paste, fire up Python, but you have enough with some know-how that maybe, maybe you could recreate it. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, so I wanted to have these different questions, uh, slightly different, because I wanted right. to see whether people pick up on this like step-by-step -step proof of concept, just a, a fire exploit that you could very quickly adapt versus. You actually need some experience and time. And again, like this life cycle of zero days and so forth, like the longer it takes you for you to essentially reverse engineer the vulnerability and figure it out, like the the more you come into that area where maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's the patches out there until you figure out um, the exploit. Um, yeah, I, I wonder, I was wondering, I wanted to see like whether people differentiate between those two things. Again, like, a real threat actor with actual like technical ability, I don't think that it matters too much. I, I I guess it's easier for them to just take a finished exploit. But I do every time when when like a vulnerability gets announced and people see the patches, it just takes literally a day on Twitter and somebody just figured it out. Yeah. So I don't think actually uh, there for like a, a, actually an experienced uh, hacker, there's much necessarily a difference. They just need time for it. If they consider the vulnerability to be useful, they, they will find the time for it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What's your take on it? Do you think, because I think we, we see this on Twitter where, you know, some details of a unpatched vulnerability gets public, either because we see just the patch in the code, but the proof of concept is missing, or just like the description makes people guess and look and figure it out. Um, yeah, this is what I feel like I've 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 done again because it's like not even uh, maybe semantics on whether or not it's patched or unpatched um but I again I think patched is the better more ideal case scenario um unpatched I think I do lean is probably still ethical um, and the reason I say, so I think ethical all above board, patched and unpatched, more so patched than unpatched. Sorry, that's confusing. Um, but the reason that I say that is only because of like, hey, defenders, incident response teams, analysts, sock watch floor, so they can better figure out leftover artifacts or indicators of compromise or things that are, oh, things that might mitigate this situation or how can I try to at least plug holes and have a workaround for this vulnerable, uh, exploitable code. Uh, so I think, and I have always leaned that, yeah, transparent information, try to get as much out as you can. I think all of the details permissible uh, without giving the code, without giving away, here's how you exploit this immediately, especially in the unpatched scenario, uh, the better. So I think ethical, but just for the sake of like, let's do detection engineering, let's hunt for it, let's try to board up the windows and doors while we can. Yeah, mm. yeah. Again, like for me, it's obviously an even less problematic version than the previous ones, where I, for whatever reason, lean that it's say that it's okay for full disclosure almost. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It, there's a time aspect again, like even the details, we see it on Twitter, like people figure it out very quickly uh, regardless, um, but still it slows down by a day or so. Um, uh, but again, like it, it's probably you are also like, if you just wait for the patch before releasing information, you are generally always like at a better point, so to say, um, uh, ethically speaking, I guess. Um, but yeah, I agree, like as much information out there because maybe you can mitigate it uh, somehow. And sometimes the mitigation, unfortunately, leaks the same information. So if you say like you can mitigate the vulnerability by disabling that one feature, now everybody yep. knows, okay, it's in that one feature. So 
I don't know. Like then I'm generally leaning towards let's just get the information out there, let the world burn for a moment. Let's hope the organizations have additional measures to like even if somebody exploits it, that they're not getting that far or whatever. Um, but like let, let's get this information out there and let's fix the issue because then again once it's fixed then it's, it's not a problem anymore right um, or if you can mitigate it rather than leaving it unmitigated knowing that maybe a threat actor has access to it or so uh, i don't know i feel like i need to build out a scorecard for us or like a, the delineation of each of these questions here's john's ethical and here's live overflows yeah. ethical and unethical. But, <laughs> yeah but, but generally speaking like I, I i feel like my my, my general take is most of it like is people exaggerate a bit too much the severity i feel like for some of the issues but to be honest i've you you have more experience in that sense because i've never been like on kind of like the blue team side or i was never part of a vulnerability that suddenly like showed up in the logs of somebody <laughs> else so i'm like not speaking from experience so i understand that it's very easy for me to say like whatever let the world burn a little bit i i don't have a problem like it's companies that get exploited not humans or so like mm. whatever they, they steal a bit of data i don't care i don't know like that sounds maybe a bit crazy but but i don't care that much about it for me this unethical part really becomes on um uh, in Okay, wait, rewind, because I don't think you can really stop like threat actors from doing anything like it will always happen and so forth. But I do think that we can take responsibility for like the step by step tutorials for beginners because uh, we can actually stop like harm committed uh, at, at, at that point. But uh, yeah. How are you holding up? How are you feeling? Are you are you running out of gas over here, or can we keep cruising? Like that's the last couple. Maybe. How much is how much is left? So there's one more question. There's two more questions. There's three more questions. Three. But oh it, it gets to the gist of, hey, maybe the proof of concept exploit, the code itself, which probably we've already discussed, and simple lying to deceiving to someone, um, and how to use an exploit script for a zero day. I feel like we've basically covered the gist. Um, I it's, yeah, I, uh, you you can maybe pull it up again, but again, uh, but I guess the the data also is a little bit not that useful anymore after this one person was spamming uh, the responses. Whoops. I think we have to just like take out the majority a little bit and then uh, yeah, kind of see a bit more the rel uh, the relativeness to each other. Read. Uh, so last couple of questions, I'm sorry for scrolling, but to the very, very end, it's sharing the proof of concept for an exploit patch. So absolutely got, got blown and, up. And look, I find this answer in, I mean, it got blown up by the fake answers probably, but also it probably had a majority ethical before as well. Agreed. Um, and again, like this life cycle of a vulnerability, um, even when the patch is out and you literally drop the proof of concept exploit at that moment, like no system will be patched yet. And then it will take time until the systems are patched. Um, is there really so much more damage not done? Or is this like so much less damage than releasing the proof concept for the, uh, for the zero day before that? Um, it, if we really think about that, I, I feel like it's surprising how different the answers is because like imagine like the difference of a proof of concept exploit um, released for an unpatched vulnerability, it will be patched in no time. Like I know, I understand like some person unfortunately has to skip their Christmas and fix it and get the fix out and stuff. I like it sucks, but uh, I feel like getting a proof concept out for a zero day um, will get it to the patched state very very quickly and now we are in this question here uh we are in the patch state and suddenly everybody finds it ethical okay but i still feel like in the beginning there can be like so much like there will be still a lot of damage that's a good point. but again i'm also leaning here ethical I'm totally okay like i i feel like it's fair game at this point i i i, I agree uh, and the uh, attackers are not sleeping, you know, like uh, they can probably figure it out maybe themselves as well. Uh, lying or deceiving to someone, I think, unethical, shot up. I mean, this is like, I include this question because uh, I... <laughs> Litmus test. Everybody says probably unethical, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, 
you know, if you think about it, fishing or social engineering in general, because I, I also feel like lots of people like celebrate social engineering so much and social engineering engagements, oh, um, uh, like getting through customer service and whatever. That is literally what you are doing, like lying and deceiving uh, another human. And for me, that's highly unethical. And if you phrase it like this, I think everybody agrees it's unethical, but phrase it as social engineering, then suddenly like it's a cool thing. Um, for me, it's literally the same, but but maybe you can help me with this. Like what is the difference between social engineering that everything everybody f apparently finds cool versus just straight lying and deceiving? Like what's the difference? Why is this other one okay? Oh, that is a super good question. <laughs> how how do you frame that? How do you square that? Um, I guess you know the social engineering in the in the traditional like in in a company, your the employee is representing that company has to do a certain job, um, has to follow certain protocols, um, and if you can get them to break those protocols, then you know that's a problem. And I understand that that's maybe important to figure out. Um, on the other hand, you know, maybe the protocol is flawed. You know, you just need to tell them the correct uh, answers and follow the protocol. And then what is gained? Like, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah. I, if you're cool with it, am going to put these side by side just for us. Like, I, I'm curious about your answer, my answer, and just its own visual, if you're totally okay with that. Uh, let me like copy and paste and build these all out. Um, are you, are you okay with, Hey, covering the air for a little bit? I don't know. Chatting about, oh, yeah, yeah. there's a, there's, there's one good response about, um, that it's cool because it's in a controlled environment. Um, yeah, and yeah, probably I agree that that is what it's, you know, you're not using it against, I don't know, on a personal level against somebody it's, it, I, you do it against an, an employee of a company, uh, you know, that is I don't know. It's it, it it's not a single necessarily a single person anymore. But in the end, you're still lying to that one person. It, it, again, it depends a little bit on whether it was kind of like known and accepted and agreed upon, and the person knowing that this could happen. Uh, if a person in customer service knows that they will get test calls, for example, like you know, this will happen once a month. That one person will be a test call to check whether I follow the protocol correctly or so. And then you do it, you test it, that's fine. But I don't know, if you have never talked to your employees about that, and now somebody comes in, starts lying. And then again, you know, the the whole arguments about the phishing stuff is always uh, like one of the arguments, but threat actors do that. We need to test that because threat actors do that. But then threat actors, they will also go on a very personal level. They might uh extort like make pictures of you and extort you um they might uh like you know hit, hit you up on a dating app and get you to send some pictures and then use that as leverage um they might um i don't know like talk to you uh in in a bar to give up some details about something like i don't know like all of that is social engineering and some people like defend that with threat actors would do that but um there's a line and i do believe like the line is you know if it's really like the employee knows that it might happen and it will also only happen in that one case. like it will be for example um, um a support person on the phone they know once a month there might be a call they try to get past me and that's i need to defend against i can still trust my colleagues on the lunch table that when they like they, that they are not trying to get at me you know like um if 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 you don't know where the attack might be coming from, you become paranoid. Like that is a miserable life uh, to live like that. If if you cannot trust your colleagues anymore, sitting at a lunch table and blurb about an an annoying call you had or so, but now you like you get spied on basically and get reported for saying something. So I don't know. I that's a key territory then. Goodness gracious. I am really glad that we got to chat about this. I think it's kind of fascinating and cool to dig into all these different things. And uh, it's funny. I don't think we ever found a resolution. I don't think there was meant to be one. I don't think there was no. meant to be oh some clear answer by any means. Um, and and I think yeah, and I think this is the important thing. Like I said it in in my video at the end. I am totally okay with disagreeing on these 
points. Um, oh, totally. Yeah. Uh, because I, while I do find maybe them slightly unethical, doesn't mean that you know there's there's a, a spectrum of how unethical. There are certain things where we like end friendships over if somebody does something. I don't know, hurt <laughs> animals or something. You know, um, that is very unethical. Maybe we end a friendship over that. But uh, these topics are really like for me like very miniscules, like splitting hairs, nuanced. Uh, and I fully understand that somebody else draws the line differently. And so for me, it's a fun discussion. There's no right or wrong. I fully accept that, you know, my position is not the right one. It's just the one I fe I personally feel comfortable with. And I like the discussion, you know, I I'd like to talk with other people about it, but, and maybe convince you of my point, but in the end of the day, like, I don't mind that you have a different one. So that's very important for me to say. I don't think we try to come to a conclusion or figure out what is right. It's totally fine um, uh, to, to, to see it differently. Yeah, this wasn't a debate by any means. This wasn't a, oh, argumentative counter or like rebuttal, whatever. Uh, it's just kind of thinking and just speculating and keeping that food for thought kind of with everything that we do. Um, in that realm of, of hacking, ethical hacking, maybe sometimes blur the line or find the line if there is one for unethical hacking uh, and especially education and information. With, with all that said, are you totally cool with like, hey, a little uh, speed run, speed dating? Yeah. We fill in what we're thinking, where, which, and each. Uh, yeah. Let's see. I leaned ethical for fishing. You leaned unethical. Uh, uh, what was the, can there be unethical courses in general? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, then for the fishing, um, unethical. Okay. And you leaned ethical for SQL injection. Oh yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Okay. Actually, speed run. You want? Okay. Uh, SQL <laughs> injection was ethical. <laughs> Malware development tutorial. You were going unethical. unethical. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Unpatched vulnerability, sharing proof of concept exploit code. Uh, actually, let's put me, I, I think I answered the first time ethical, but put me there on neutral by, because I do think uh, it's probably a little bit nuanced. Responsible disclosure is, uh, is maybe the right thing to do. But my <laughs> heart were, goes, my, my hacker heart is in full disclosure. Yeah, yeah, I know. My, my hacker heart says full disclosure. But... All right, let me put like a bunch of asterisks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I am responsible disclosure on that. So unpatched is the key word, I think. Yeah, fair. Um, in which uh, case, I lean ethical there. And here also ethical. Ethical for you too. Um, also ethical for me. Yeah, I think we're both ethical for that one. Both ethical on a patched vulnerability, having an exploit code released. I think that's pretty clear. Everything that we've been doing uh, throughout all of our channel, uh, everything that we share for info and for details. So lying or deceiving someone unethical, unethical. across the board. Yeah. yeah. I realize my face is in the way, I'm sorry. Beginner friendly step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use an exploit script. Oh yeah, we didn't really talk about this one. But yeah. I, yeah. I do wonder, like, think of the typical zero day, like imagine there's a step-by-step -step tutorial log for J. This threat model, like the, the, the problem I have in mind with the phishing and malware stuff, like this unknowledgeable person actually doing harm to people around them. Uh, I, To be honest, like, I don't know what they can do with a step-by-step -step for log for J. I, I, it, it's not even applicable, like targeting friends or family or like, uh, I should probably, based on what I said um, before, say that it's unethical because I'm focusing here on the beginner friendly. But in the end, I don't think that it's actually in reality usable and actually ends up being harmful in the same way than malware development. I don't think that like that a 16 year old can really uh, abuse that much. Again, and the zero day will then be patched. Um, you know, I, before they figured out how to do it, then it might already be patched again. So. For in that because of this specific case, because I don't see the real life problem here, I'm actually uh, going uh, ethical. Mm. Wait, what just happened? Did we like get you to like? Uh, was that a, no, like no, a no. full one? No, no, no. My, 
so let me explain again. The reason why for me phishing and malware is unethical is because I believe there's real harm with um, people setting it up, sending it to friends and family, um, sending it on Discord servers, trying to actually like do stuff. Um, and I believe that's actually happening based on my bubble that I've experienced. But I feel like a step-by-step -step tutorial, like for Log4j, for example, for the typical zero day, they're like, they are not like the target, like they will, what, what would they, like, what, I don't know, like what they would do with that. Uh, and, and, and then again, like until they figured out how to do it, uh, then it will be patched anyway, right? Like it takes them a day or two and then the zero day is patched anyway. Uh, so I, I really don't see like the realistic harm that could actually come, come from that. Okay. I mean, hmm. maybe it's neutral. I guess. I guess maybe. Maybe I should match because for me it's kind of similar. Then, in in that sense, like, what's the difference of the proof of concept exploit and beginner friendly step by step? I just don't think that there is. Um, yeah, you can put me on neutral. I didn't yeah. mean to say that you should be neutral. No, I I think that's where I'd naturally land too. Yeah. Um, because okay, okay, maybe to be fair, maybe I can come up with a system like maybe a zero day in iOS. And then you can send or iCloud, and then you can now hack this other person. Actually, now that I think about it, that would be probably unethical in the same way. It, it's just not for every zero day. It's, it's the specific case of it has to be abusable by the 16 year old, desperate, uh, unguided young person. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, okay, actually change it to unethical. I. <laughs> I, I can make up an example for a uh, zero day that where I would find this problematic, but um, I, I would, but I feel... realistically, I don't think really it doesn't matter much. Yeah. My gut reaction was unethical and I feel like I should probably stick with that more so. Um, but I can also kind of see the perspective where, you know what, maybe it's not a big, this sucks. This is stupid. Why do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it's very difficult with concrete examples because maybe, you know, if, if if I say zero day, maybe I have in mind, I don't know, uh, regular expression DDoS in, in some NPM package, you know? Right. Technically, maybe a zero day if we want to define it like that. But another person has maybe like a, I don't know, SSH zero day in mind. Yeah. Um... Oh, no, my camera is just dying here uh oh your last one okay uh well hey we can start to slow this thing down i think the very very last component that i would like to chat about i if you don't mind i'm probably going to pull up this uh old, oh, old yeah. video <laughs> of yours which i think was the spur of probably all of this um and a funny recreated scenario of it going through these Google forums and filling things out. Uh, yeah, so, getting... yeah, maybe brief concept. Uh, a few years ago, I guess it was a bigger problem than right now where YouTube was uh, banning um, YouTube channels or just uh, banning individual videos uh, about teaching some hacking stuff. Um, and I had the stance that it's was the right decision in certain cases um because i had this opinion about like that that's what was also important like i didn't have this opinion because of john now or this other uh fishing course that was making us around on twitter this is an opinion i had like i believe this is like a two-year-old video or four-year-old video yeah four uh, years. Four -year -old. so i had this opinion like the whole time uh, it just like triggered it again so i was going through some theoretical video titles um and see like how people uh feel about that um, uh, and these are more specific, I guess, examples rather than a bit more open end. Than these are really know. interesting, though, because especially because the video titles on its own as a as a context there, I, I think that's interesting. So the reason that I pulled this up, and I think if I may, for our last kind of chatter, um, I know you're getting to the end of your camera's life cycle, um, but. <laughs> Well, both of us being content creators, both of us being silly, hey, folks that make YouTube videos and all. Um, what do you think, because you sprinkled this in in uh, one of your videos, I think this one. Is there value in the disclaimer that, hey, 
this video is for educational purposes only. Uh, uh, does that hold any water? <laughs> for me, that's completely irrelevant. And every time when I uh, see that, I cringe a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I think that is uh, like a nonsense, uh, uh, a nonsense term. Either, either it cannot like i don't know the disc i mean what well, it has no use either either you believe it's dangerous and you don't want to put it out or you don't believe it's dangerous and then you know, i don't know yeah. yeah the disclaimer is a meme somebody right disclaimer is a meme <laughs> i saw some uh you know hey some of the discussions in in comments and in youtube comments and chat and here it's like cuz i refrain from putting a disclaimer at least in like oh a written thing i i might say it ad hoc hey you know what this is probably just something that we shouldn't deal with or do don't be a cyber and, criminal and that blah, is blah, blah, blah. Good, you know you explain sometimes we get lost and we don't know like are we crossing a boundary right now sometimes you know like yeah. saying like okay now you reach your territory disclaimer this you shouldn't do this and that May, you know in that sense that that is uh something different like yeah yeah uh but i have i i get occasional hits maybe some folks that say john doesn't even put a disclaimer it's like well he, i think we're all understanding that it could be yeah. potentially some sketch people are saying that uh the disclaimer is for legal purposes you need to do it to protect yourself but to i don't know like i'm naively thinking maybe that a court doesn't really care about the disclaimer like if you put something out there that for whatever reason like really caused some really really big trouble then the court will not care about like a disclaimer like you cannot sell drugs and say hey i told you they are bad you know like <laughs> it doesn't matter i i think it's it's i uh, but show me a court case you know maybe i'm wrong on this maybe uh there's a court case saying it had a disclaimer so it's okay there is however uh maybe this is uh I, I, sorry if you try to make a end here no but, no, no. Uh, um all for chat i i did make a video about where i was reading over the german hacking laws mm. and uh we had some discussion or problem in germany where the heck where the law basically made it illegal uh for certain hacking tools um and so everybody who suddenly got nervous is nmap already like a hacking tool am i committing a crime am i in trouble already just downloading ubuntu or, or kali or something like this um and then this was kind of tested in our highest court and the result was no dual like uh, dual uses maybe the yeah i guess dual use is that the correct word i'm not sure but mm -hmm. um tools that can be used for professional pen testers red teamers and as well for bad people um that is fine um it the, only if the tool is a hundred percent intended for malicious uh use cases then it's a problem and i think that's a very interesting that sounds weird but it's very interesting to think about because for example SSH is a tool to remotely access a computer. The functionality in some sense is not different than kind of like a, a remote access Trojan that you install or TeamViewer or so. Even some scammers use, you know, the legit software TeamViewer, but in that moment as kind of like a malicious uh, remote access Trojan essentially. So the German court at least sees a massive difference between how a tool is presented and advertised and so forth. So if your RET, your remote access project is advertised on GitHub as this is malware, this is remote access, or you sell it on some hacker forums, like this is the area where you advertise it, then probably that tool falls under that hacker paragraph and it's illegal. But if you have it in a professional environment, you know, like, uh, this is a tool for red teamers and this is for testing and you don't have the functionality to make it like easily maliciously possible or, or uh, you know, the accord in the end will figure out where you land on there. But I think this highlights a little bit like the same thing can be literally the technology wise, the remote access thing can be uh, uh, showcased or used in two very different contexts. Um, and essentially, it's the same knowledge and so forth. Scammers can also abuse TeamViewer, but TeamViewer is not an illegal tool. It's a valid big company, you know. 
um, can still be of use for this. But so the framing and so forth becomes very important. Yeah. And, and that's what I was saying about like, it doesn't matter if you sell malware and you can use it to spy on your friends, but you make a legal disclaimer, the court will whatever, like it clearly was intended to cause harm here. Um, so, you know, try to make it as professional as possible and then you're probably fine and you don't need the legal disclaimer on that. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I didn't lose anybody here. <laughs> no, uh, that's interesting. It's, it just keeps adding to the very subjective and fluffy and dynamic and no clear answer all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Can I ask another question? Have you ever taken down a video because of some oddball ethical concern or have you never put yourself in that spot? I am sure, uh, no, it's uh, like taken down. No, I don't think so. I, I think yeah. I've never taken down, except they were embarrassing and old, but I think I just unlisted them. Right. But okay. uh, in terms of like ethical concern, or maybe I'm forgetting. It has been many years. I've been also been on YouTube uh, for right. eight years or something. So yeah. it might have happened and I forgot, but I, I nothing comes up right now. The reason I ask is because I, I see a, a, a couple in the chat kind of poking fun at me because uh, there was one video that I uploaded and then took down in like a day because uh, it was more of the like, oh, geolocation efforts trying to find a person based off their computer. Um, and that had probably a little bit more sensationalized uh, title and thumbnail than I should have. It's like the shocked face of like, oh, that's my house. And like an arrow pointing to some street view crap, whatever. So I was like, you know what? Maybe that one we don't need to 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 put out into the hands of the ether. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's always in stuff. Like, yeah. kind of like it, which is essentially just like, Tell, talking telling people how to stalk maybe somebody this is like you're making up an other topic where maybe uh again like do people abuse that maybe for um next I video mean, is yeah. osint ethical <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> next live stream well sweet man uh, what do you think we're we at the end here we've been roughing for maybe two hours but i i think this was really really cool personally i i appreciate everyone tuning in kind of listening and sharing their thoughts um I, it's, it's fascinating to see different perspectives and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm glad kind of both of us going into this and even at the end of it, still have that perspective, like, Hey, it's just not a big deal. Relax everybody to kind of the end of your video. We said like, look, we're not trying to burn the world down. Uh, it's just kind of things to think about, uh, and keep on our moral compass here and there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like, you know, yeah hearing what other people think maybe maybe we realize we are wrong maybe we understand oh no i actually believe strongly in what in in, in my case also i i think these um, i love to engage uh with discussion and debates it goes beyond the hacking of course like politically and stuff i enjoy uh hearing other perspectives just in order to check you know my standpoint and uh, so i love these kind of discussions that's why i love maybe triggering a bit people on twitter with some odd security take where maybe I'm cherry picking a little bit here and there, but in the end, it's all just for, you know, collectively as a community, uh, let's have discussions around this. This is fun. It's educational, um, I, I believe. Yeah. And in the end, like it shouldn't be any drama or so it's, it's really just an, uh, educational endeavor. Well, hey, thank you so much for being willing to get together and chat. Uh, I don't know if folks that tuned in later maybe didn't get to see the intro of this thing, but it was just a completely random, spontaneous, uh, I messaged Live Overflow on Discord and it's like, hey, you want to do a live stream tomorrow where we just talk about stuff? <laughs> uh, so I'm super duper grateful for you, uh, especially with the opportunity over the weekend. And I know it's a little bit late over on your time zone, but thank you, thank you, thank you again and again. And we got to do this again sometime. Yeah, thank you so much for having me again applause for john reaching the 1 million everybody clap 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 uh good job thank uh you. and uh yeah thanks again for having me i think this was fun uh thanks for reaching out and yeah let's do this again maybe we find some other topics uh to ramble about maybe some thank more you. surveys if you have any ideas uh, that that's kind of fun to then go over these results hell yeah absolutely yeah. all right cool. we'll tune out all in stream here but thank you all so much <laughs>